Glory be to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and God, Christ Jesus. It's with great pleasure and joy I say a few words as an introduction to the documentary of the Narnam Charles, produced by my beloved spiritual son, Mr. Sony Chandy. The documentary itself is self-explanatory, but I need to put on record my sincere thanks and gratitude for this commitment and the effort of Mr. Chandi. According to the history of the church, St. Thomas came to India in AD 52. The Narnam Church, which was founded by St. Thomas the Apostle in AD 54. For me, Narnam Church is really the proud not only of the church but of the diocese because the, the diocese itself is known as in the name of Naranam Palli, the Naranam Diocese. My former metropolitans are Thoma Dionysius and Giver Gismar Ostatios Metropolitan, the metropolitans of blessed memories. Their enthronement took place in Naranam Church and to me, my enthronement also took place in Nernam Church in 2007. The historical importance of the church is a great thing. A lot of people, pilgrims, far and near, they come to Nernam Pali to seek the blessings of St. Thomas. St. Thomas founded the church, but the church was founded in the name of St. Mary, the Blessed Mother of Jesus. The relics of St. Thomas is kept in Nernam Church and to adorn this uh, relic, a lot of people gather there also. Rust, the documentary will speak to you everything in details. And may God bless you all. Amen. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 15-16 Following the words of their beloved master, some disciples started traveling the nearby regions surrounding present-day Israel and elsewhere. And one among the twelve traveled far and wide, following the silk route to the fabled land India, to the shores of the present-day Kerala, a major trading destination during those times. It's been almost 2,000 years since the doubting disciple of Lord filled with the faith from seeing the nail marks and placing the fingers into his wounds, walked the soil of present-day Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Didymus Thomas or Thomas Leha, little did he know that when he placed his hands on the Lord's spear wound, he was touching his own wound, inflicted by a spear because of which he died on 21st December 72 AD at Parangimalai of Chola Empire in today's St. Thomas Mound in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. An early 3rd century Suryak work known as Akta Thoma connects the Apostles Indian ministry with a king in the north, Kutnafar who later turns out to be the Indo-Parthian king, Gondophars. The capital of this king was Taxila, the place of one of the ancient universities in India. Taxila is in today's Pakistan between Islamabad and Rawalpindi, which was a part of then India. The excavations in one of the ruins of this region reveal the identity of King Gondophars. 
Saint Thomas is believed to have returned to Israel to witness the ascension of Mother Mary to heaven and then returned again to India in 52 AD. Saint Thomas is believed to have reached Port Musiris, a trading center in modern-day North Paravur and Kodungulur in the state of Kerala, India. Here, he is believed to have converted the Jews as well as Brahmins who is believed to have had a mix of Hindu and Buddhist traditions to follow Christ. St. Thomas founded eight churches Neranam, Palayur, Nilakkal, Kotakyav, Kokamangalam, Kollam and Malyankara besides Tirvamkod in Tamil Nadu known as the seven and a half churches of Kerala. Neranam Church is one of the oldest existing churches in the world founded by St. Thomas in 54 AD. The present structure is believed to be the fourth structure since its inception by the Apostle. Neranam has been the flagship church of the Nasrani Jadi as referred to the early Christians. Nasranis were a trading community very wealthy and had a high place in ancient society as observed by Gibbons, a British historian. Neranam Church was the fifth church in Kerala established by St. Thomas. Neranam in those days was known as Nelkinda as mentioned by Pliny in his book Naturalis Historia, written in 77 AD. Another book, Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, by an unknown author, in 60 AD bears ample testimony to the existence of Nelkinda as a major trading port of the first century AD. Even the 15th century Kannasa Ramayana affirms that Neranam was a great place as graceful as heaven itself. Saint Thomas arrived at Nelkinda in 52 AD via the Pamba River tributary Kotachal, a main channel for the movement of spices from the interior areas of Kerala. He alighted at a bathing ghat in the southern side of Kotachal, which is today known as Thomathakadav, translated as the Bank of Thomas. A spot near this can be visited today as a destination for tourists where there is a St. Thomas Art Gallery owned by the Neranam Thomathakadav Smaraka Trust and Ecumenical Body and a small retreat center. Niranam had immense Buddhist influence and the people listened to St. Thomas, an ascetic with flowing robes and genial countenance about his master, Jesus of Nazareth. Folklore has it that one day while the Brahmins were performing the morning bathing rituals in the river, he stepped down and asked them to hold the water in the air that they were pouring towards the sun. They could not, but the postal threw up a handful of water and it stood suspended in air. They instantly accepted him. There is also a story about someone trying to implicate the postal with the murder of a boy. A crowd gathered towards him. He prayed to the heavens and made the dead boy alive. A few families embraced Christianity in Neranam. He planted a wooden cross near Trikpaleshwaram temple for them. 
but some miscreants threw the cross into the nearby river after he left the place. He returned in 54 AD when he learned about the loss of the cross. He retrieved the cross from the river and planted it where the Nirnam church stands today. The great flood of 1341 AD had changed a lot of the geography of the surrounding area of the church, but the church remained unaffected. Very limited information about the church activities and other relevant information of early Christians from the 1st century AD to the 15th century AD is available because of a very sad incident that happened in Nernam church during the times of Martoma VI, who was the spiritual and the religious head of the Malangra church from 1765 AD to 1808 AD. A box full of important ancient documents and written evidences wrote on seasoned leaves about the times of the origin of church and how early undivided Christians lived from 1st century to the 15th century kept in the Nelpura or the storehouse which is preserved till today was eaten away by white ants or termites. This was an incredible blow to the history of early Christianity in India. Martho Mother VI, however, immediately started the damage control by getting all the relevant events chronicled in a diary of events today known as Nernam Grandhavari. Nernam Grandhavari is the existing first written piece of history in Kerala. Even though this gives us a peek into the lives of the Christians in general, lot of information between the 1st century and the 15th century was lost forever here at the Nirnam Church. Let us take a look at some of the incredible pieces of history that have stood here for centuries. Exactly towards the southeast corner of the church is the instructable stone tablets of approximately six feet long. മറ്റൊന്നും <laughs> That's like almost 2,000 years old. The writings as early as 580 are still readable. So this is done certainly much before that time. There is another small stone tablet currently placed inside the reliquary of Nernam or the Smriti Mandiram. The writings on this one are believed to be from the later part of the first millennium. The fact that the Nasranis were not a product from the missions from Europe is evident from the architectural designs and figures inscribed on every piece of history here.
the Dravidian style of art speaks of a period far ahead of the times of the Western architectural concepts, especially on granite. The shining example of this can be seen on the granite cross outside the church, which was erected in the year 1259 AD. The pieces of granite forming the pedestal of this cross were subjected to wear and tear in course of time and the entire pedestal was reset in the year 1934. The design and figures around this cross are a sight you can barely see in today's times. <laughs> Toma Parvam Ramban Patana Nanutin Alpha to Varigulula, E. Pater, Churukam Varigulin, Jungle, Evide, Savinayam, Summer Pigino. The Ramban part, a folklore, is an inspiring piece of evidence pointing towards the history of Nasranis. The Ramban part, translated as the Songs of Ramban, one Toma Ramban of the Malekal family of Nernam in 1601 AD, edited it and compiled the songs and writings passed on from 48 generation right from the 2nd century AD. These songs contain some of the historical facts of the early undivided church that got lost in the box of Nernam eaten away by white ants. It even describes the ordination of the priest Kepa from the royal family and his appointment as the successor of St. Thomas the Apostle. It even gives description about the death of St. Thomas at Mylapur. The song is said to have been composed for the use in the church of Neranam. Other age-old folk arts of Christians like Viradian Patagal is another source which describes the work of St. Thomas in India. These songs were recited by Hindu singers called Viradians or Pannars in various occasions. Margam Kalipata as well as other old sayings handed down from successive generations do agree to the references in the Ramban part. <laughs> The surroundings of the church have undergone changes over the years. It's believed that right in front of the church, there was a structure called Padipura Maliga a multi-storied wooden structure which was the abode of the archdeacons, Marthomas and visiting dignitaries of the church for various centuries. In remembrance to that structure, a miniature model is made in front of the gate of the church today. It has been said that the Padipura Maliga in front of the old Syrian church in Chenganur looks like the replica of the one that was in front of the church in Neranam. The decisions on the administration of the churches were made in this structure. It was elevated from the ground level to survive the floods that used to happen every year. There are clear references of this structure in the writings in Neranam Grandhavari. Neram, William Lee, Vishitha Martoma, Sliha, and Stavida Maya, Uri Devalema. Adile Adiburadira Maya, Uru Mamudi Satutiana, E. Karnanada. E. Mamudi Satutiade, Chilla Pratia the Gulunda. On the 
ഈ മാമോദിസ തൊട്ടി ഏതാണ്ട് ആയിരത്തിൽ അധികം വർഷം പഴക്കമുള്ള ഒരു മാമോദിസ തൊട്ടിയാണ് ഈ മാമോദിസ തൊട്ടി പണിതിരിക്കുന്നത് ഒറ്റ കല്ലിൽ ഇത്രയും വിസ്താരത്തിൽ പണിതിരിക്കുന്ന ഒന്നാണ് ഇതിൻ്റെ വിസ്താരം നമ്മൾ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ഏതാണ്ട് വലിയ ഒരു വലുപ്പത്തിലുള്ള ഒരു ഒറ്റ കല്ലിലാണ് ഇത് പണിതിരിക്കുന്നത് മൂന്ന് തരത്തിലുള്ള കുരിശുകളാണ് ഈ മാമോദിസ തൊട്ടിയുടെ പുറം ഭിത്തിയിൽ നമ്മൾ കാണുന്നത് അതിൽ കിഴക്ക് ഭാഗത്ത് ചിത്രീകരിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു കുരിശ് അത് സാധാരണ നമ്മൾ കാണുന്ന ഒരു ടൈപ്പ് കുരിശാണ് വടക്ക് ഭാഗത്ത് കാണുന്ന ഈ കുരിശിന് എൻ്റെ പേര് നരണം കുരിശ് എന്നാണ് ലോകത്തിൽ ഒരിടത്തും ഈ ടൈപ്പ് കുരിശ് ഒരിക്കലും കാണുവാൻ സാധ്യമല്ല ഈ കുരിശിൻ്റെ ആ കുറുകിയുള്ള ബാറിൻ്റെ ഒരറ്റം മുകളിലേക്ക് ചൂണ്ടുന്നതും മറ്റേ അറ്റം താഴേക്ക് ചൂണ്ടുന്നതുമാണ് ഈ കുരിശിൻ്റെ ദൈവശാസ്ത്രപരമായ ഒരു അർത്ഥം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സ്വർഗത്തെയും ഭൂമിയെയും തമ്മിൽ യോജിപ്പിക്കുന്ന ക്രിസ്തുവിൻ്റെ ഒരു സൂചനയാണ് മറ്റൊരു കുരിശ് ഈ ഭാഗത്ത് പടിഞ്ഞാറ് ഭാഗത്തായിട്ട് കാണുന്ന ഒന്നാണ് ശരിക്കും ഈ കുരിശ് കാ ശരിയായിട്ട് രീതിയിൽ കാണുവാൻ കഴിയുന്നത് ഈ നിരണം പള്ളിയുടെ മദ്ബഹായിയുടെ മേൽക്കൂരയുടെ ഏറ്റവും മുകളിൽ കാണുന്ന ഒരു കുരിശാണ് ആ കുരിശ് അറിയപ്പെടുന്നത് അയൺ ക്രോസ് ഓഫ് നിരണം എന്നാണ് അത് അറിയപ്പെടുന്നത് പേർഷ്യൻ സഭയുമായുള്ള ഒരു ബന്ധം മലങ്കര സഭയ്ക്ക് നാലാം നൂറ്റാണ്ട് മുതൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നുവല്ലോ ആ ബന്ധത്തിൽ വന്ന ഒരു കുരിശാണ് ഈ അയൺ ക്രോസ് ഓഫ് നിരണം എന്ന് അറിയപ്പെടുന്നത് These pillars are now found in various places in the premises of the church. Nokka ee kallugal mikkavarum ellam ore pokkam ullana. Idu valare pradhanapetta oru sthanathu alangarikkapetta kallugal aanu ennalladhinu yaadoru samshayam illa. Nokka ee idile roopangal idu oru purohithinte രൂപമാണ് പുരോഹിതൻ്റെ അക്കാലത്തെ വേഷവിധാനങ്ങളുടെ ഒരു ഒരു ഉദാഹരണം കൂടെയാണിത് ഇതിന് നിർഭാഗ്യവശാൽ കേടുപാടുകൾ സംബന്ധി സംഭവിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു ഇതിന് തേയ്മാനങ്ങൾ ധാരാളം ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുന്നു നൂറ്റി ഇരുപത് വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് ഇവിടെ സ്ഥാപിക്കപ്പെട്ട പ്രൈമറി സ്കൂളിൻ്റെ തൂണുകളാക്കി ഈ കുറേ ഏറെ കല്ലുകൾ നമ്മളവിടെ അവിടെ ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ഈ കല്ലുകളെ സംബന്ധിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആ പഠിപ്പര മാളികയുടെ ഭാഗങ്ങളായിരുന്നു എന്ന് നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിക്കേണ്ടിയിരിക്കുന്നു മറ്റൊരു ഭാഷ്യം കൂടെ ഇവിടെ പ്രചരിപ്പിക്ക പ്രചരിക്കപ്പെട്ടിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇത് നാടകശാലയുടെ തൂണുകളായിരുന്നു തന്നെ ഏതാണ്ട് എല്ലാം ഒരേ ഫാഷനിൽ തയ്യാറാക്കപ്പെട്ട കല്ലുകളാണ് It is believed that these pillars were parts of a theater or a playhouse where devotional and biblical plays of Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Joseph in the land of the pharaohs was played for the congregation. Kerala thile nadaga prasthanathinte uddharanam nadathittullathin pradhanamayitte palli palliyude parisarathil nadaga shala annu undayirunnu. സാമാന്യ ജനങ്ങളുടെ ഉള്ളിലേക്ക് വേദത്തിൻ്റെ മർമ്മങ്ങളെ നിക്ഷേപിക്കുന്നതിനുമുള്ള ഒരു മാധ്യമമായിരുന്നു ഈ നാടക പ്രസ്ഥാനം ദിസ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ എൻ എലക്വൻ്റ് എവിഡൻസ് ഓഫ് കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ഓഫ് നസ്രാനീസ് ടു ദ ആർട്ട് ആൻഡ് കൾച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് കേരള Right on the top outside of the main altar is the 3D style iron cross known as the iron cross of Neranam. It has four lotus in between the arms of the cross. It is believed that this cross was shifted from the old church building that existed from 1259 AD. The unique square well outside the church is from time immemorial. built with porous volcanic rocks that let water seep in from the sides and the bottom this structure is rare and keeps the water cooler by 5 to 6 degrees
Another interesting piece of art is the Pita of Nernam. This wooden structure is believed to be from the old church building, showing the body of Christ on the lap of Mother Mary. But the interesting fact is that the people depicted on the side of the sculpture is wearing Indian costumes. A very important and old statue of Nernam is the replica of the statue of Our Lady of Miracle of Jaffna Patao. This was a gift which was given by the Portuguese somewhere around the first half of the 17th century AD. This statue can only be viewed once in a year when it's displayed in the church during the feast of Mother Mary from the 1st to the 8th of September every year. Another artifact preserved here is the horse chariot of the King of Travancore. This was bought by Nernam Church. It has its own steering mechanisms with brakes and shock absorbers. It was modified by the church using a chariot repairer from Kotem to its present shape and was used to transport the mortal remains of deceased church members to the church for their final journey. As the congregation increased in size, the church was too small to accommodate the early faithful Christians. The first child of this church is the Chambakulam Kalurkara St. Mary's Church, formed in 427 AD. It was under Nernam Church up to the 15th century. Then it came under the Syro Malabar Church under the Archiparchy of Changnasheri. The original church at Chambakulam is believed to be in the place where the current cemetery of the church is located. Later it was moved to the current location. Today Chambakulam Church is the mother church of most of the Catholic Syrian churches in Alapi district. The foreign churches of Alapi, Eratua and Pulingun were formed from Chambakulam. The next child of Nernam was St. Mary's Church, Changnasheri, known today as the St. Mary's Metropolitan Cathedral, Changnasheri. This church was established in 1177 AD and is now under the Syro Malabar Catholic Church. The next church that came out of the Nernam Church is the St. Mary's Kalupara Church in the year 1339 AD. This church is the part of the Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church. One of the Sadikanite Aurigarium, Namale Purviaria, Hindukana, Avra Ranian <laughs> The multitude of churches and congregation that is established today in the surrounding areas of Alapi to Kotem to Chenganu to Patanamthitta were all formed out of the branches of Nernam Church 
over a period of nearly 2000 years. Thus you can see the term Mother Church or in fact the Great Mother Church aptly describes St. Mary's Orthodox Church of Naranam and its legacy. The advent of the Portuguese power paved way for building up the Catholic Church in India. The Malangra Church was associated with the ancient Persian Church. They did not interfere with the working of the Malabar Malangra Churches and only provided spiritual guidance and support. This resulted in the Middle Eastern liturgical process included in the worship in these churches. Clarification on the spiritual matters came from Persia. The persecution and confiscation of churches at the hands of the Catholic Church ended when the Dutch army, which was mightier than the Portuguese, ordered immediate withdrawal of the Portuguese troops during the 17th century AD. But by then Catholics had taken hold of many churches. Nernam Church was one of the few churches that stood defiant to the overtures by the Catholic Church. After the Kunan Cross Oath on the 3rd of January 1653 AD, a public avowal by the members of the St. Thomas Christians that they would not submit to the Jesuits and the Latin Catholic Portuguese Padroado dominance in ecclesiastical and secular life. Parambil Toma Katanar was elected bishop at St. Mary's Church Alangar by the Malangara Association. Twelve priests laid hand on him and consecrated him as bishop in 1653 AD. He became the first native democratically elected metropolitan bishop of St. Thomas Christians. Martoma I, also known as Valia Martoma. As there were people who refused to recognize him as bishop, his consecration as a bishop was regularized by Mar Gregorius Abdul Jalil, the patriarchal delegate of the Syrian Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch in 1665 AD at the Neranam Church. The year 1686 AD was a year of a miracle that ended up in a tragedy. The head of the Malangara Church or the Malangara Metropolitan was Martoma II, 1670 AD to 1686 AD. That year, the summer was extreme and the entire area was under extreme drought. Martoma II knelt down for praying in front of the Nernam Church along with large number of parishioners in extreme heat. After hours, God answered the prayers with heavy rain and thunderstorm. Everyone was happy at the miracle. But a lightning struck the Metropolitan Archbishop and he died there. The entire church went into mourning and he was interred at Nernam Church. Martoma III was also consecrated in Nernam Church. Martoma V is another head of the church worth remembering. The Dutch shipping company maliciously imposed a fine of 12,000 rupees, presently equivalent to some crores of rupees. The Martoma anticipated arrest and imprisonment as the king of Cochin expressed his helplessness. The Metropolitan Archbishop was escorted from Cochin to Nernam as a refuge from any immediate threat to him. The parish members, especially women members of Nernam Church and Chenganur Syrian Church solemnly parted with their favorite and expensive gold jewelry and other costly movable articles and expeditiously raised the amount to save the Metropolitan Archbishop from imprisonment. Martoma V is also interred in Nernam Church. One of the unforgettable heads of the Malangara Sabha 
was Martoma VI, also known as Veliamar de Vanasios, from 1765 AD to 1808 AD. He was mostly in Nernam Church in his entire official career. During his time, there were a lot of tribulation to the Malangra Church. It was during his last days that the Scottish theologian, Reverend Claudius Buchanan, met the Metropolitan Archbishop for consulting on the matters of translating the Holy Bible to Malayalam for the first time ever. The Metropolitan Archbishop, with the help of Philippos Ramban, who at the time was busy compiling the Nernam Grandhavari after the loss of the box of documents in Nernam, undertook the process and started the translation of the Bible. It is said that Philippos Ramban had already translated some part of the Bible to Malayalam. Reverend Buchanan's proposal of bearing the expenses for printing it expedited his translations. So those translations, though not the full Bible, were published by Reverend Claudius Buchanan as the first Malayalam Bible. The entire Bible was translated much later by the Bible Society of India in around the 1950s. Thus, this church had a crucial role in getting the first Malayalam Bible translated and printed. The year was 1791 AD. The Roman Catholic Church was still eyeing to grab Nernam Church. It was during this time a person named Tachil Matu Taragan of Alapi came into picture as one of the tormentors for Nernam Church. He was a very rich and influential Catholic businessman and had vast contacts and influence with the kings of Cochin and Travancore. It said that he even used to lend money to this king. He urged Matoma VI to fall in line with the Roman Catholic Church. It was here in the Nernam Church there were protracted discussions on merging the church with the Catholic Church. But during the first meet, he got a message from his home that his mother died. So he went back. Next time when the discussion started, he got a message that his son died. That was when the Malangara church heads came into a conclusion that the merger is not the will of God and stopped all talks in this regard and eventually the talks were abandoned. But he did not relent from his desire to merge Nernam church with the Catholic church. He managed to incarcerate Martoma VI and pressurized him to perform Holy Mass in the Catholic Church at Tatambali. Later on, some of the parishioners like Kochuwarki and others who were proficient in Kalaripayat, a martial art form, rescued Martoma VI and brought him back to Nernam Church. In 1799 AD, Matu Taragan again conspired with the king of Travancore and inflicted a fine of 25,000 rupees and the king sent a letter to Marto Mata VI that the church will have to pay the money or bear dire consequences. On the risk of the church being confiscated and later probably sold to Tachil Matu Taragan, the parishioners sold several movable assets for paying the fine. Meanwhile, Matu Taragan persuaded the king of Travancore to confiscate the church bell of Nernam. This was a big white metal bronze bell, which when rung had such high resonance that it could be heard 10 miles away. The king confiscated it and hanged it on East Fort in Trivandrum. Soon the bell started to ring by itself, creating nuisance for the fort occupants and the king. When the king found it that the bell was ringing by itself, his occult advisors advised him that the bell is a bad omen and should be thrown away. So the king ordered the bell to be thrown away and his soldiers took it and threw it away in the Vembanad Lake. Somewhere below these deep waters now lies the famed church bell of Neranam. Matu Taragan did have an unhappy ending. Being so influential as a trader, he still had to pay for his misdeeds. In a strange turn of events, a revolt happened in the south of the kingdom of Travancore. Eventually, Matu Taragan was caught, imprisoned, and both his ears were chopped off at the orders of Velu Tambi, the rebel leader. His entire land holdings and wealth were confiscated. 
and he remained in the prison for a long time. Though he regained his wealth as the British gave it back to him, but that was towards the end of his life. Thus ended a tumultuous period of the Mother Church. Earliest records reveal that the Malangara Church had two main centers, one in Angamali for the north and Neranam for south. Due to the political rivalry between the colonial powers, that is the Dutch and the British and the then Kingdom of Cochin, and they being hostile towards the church, the church shifted its complete administrative operations to Neranam Church. Thus, for around 18th century, Nernam Church was the virtual capital of the Malankara Church till 1815 AD when the seat of St. Thomas, which was referred to be the head of Malankara Church, was relocated to Old Orthodox Seminary in Chungam, Kotem. Currently, the seat of St. Thomas is established here in the Catholic Palace at Devalokam in Kotem, Kerala. Later in 1876, Nernam was made a diocese and the first metropolitan archbishop of the diocese was none other than the first saint of the Malankara Orthodox Church, the blessed Givagis Mar Gregorios, who is referred to as Parumala Tirmeni. He was residing at Nernam Church for administering the diocese in a narrow wooden room in the southwestern corner of the current reliquary, leave the saint in continual prayer, fasting, meditation and scant sleep. As the Metropolitan Archbishop to three dioceses, Neranam, Tumbavan and Kollam, he spent years in this hermitage and most of his decrees were issued from this sacred abode. He presided over the meeting to build the current building of the church in 1898 and approved the decision. He already had stomach ulcer and it became chronic in 1902-80. Treatments proved futile and he left his bodily mission on 2nd November 1902-80 at the age of 54. He was destined to serve the mother church and he did it with all his ability till his last days and was blessed by St. Mary, the mother of the Lord, in whose name the church stands. His holy bed is still preserved intact. It is a place where pilgrims find their comfort and remedies to their intense pains and problems. His miracles are well known to his devotees. The previous church building had distinct looks of a Hindu temple which as mentioned in the writings by Lefton Ward and Lefton Connor in their book Memoirs of the Travancore Survey 1860-1820. They described Naram Church as extensively but rudely built. By the term rudely, they surely meant that the design was alien to the British and did not fit their concept of what church would look like. The new building of Nernam Church, the plan of which was approved by a saint, was consecrated by another saint of the Malangara Orthodox Church, His Beatitude Givagisma Dionasios of Patasheril, then Malangara Metropolitan, on 14th April 1912 AD after nine years of construction. The new building, designed by the English architect Mr. Walthew Clarence Parton, was built with European influences and it resembles Roman, Dutch and Indian traditional architectural style. In this temple, there are two things in this temple. There are ten arches in this temple. There are ten arches in this temple. In this temple, there are five arches in this temple. There are five arches in this temple. The first thing is the first thing in this temple. The first thing is the first thing in this temple. The first thing is the first thing in this temple. Perisutta Dewa Madhavinde nama tuil tanne ana pani kari pichitulada. Wadaku bahagat kanenna madbaha pani kari pichitulada visudha Givurgi sahada yude nama tuilum. Teku bahagat tulla madbaha visudha Bhaganan sahada yude nama tuilum ana pani kari pichitulada. Ii muda madbaha gal kuda ade, rand ceria madbaha gal kudi i dewali tuil ulil le unda. Muda am dewali mis tidu cehi dina kala gatat tuil rand malangkara matram poli tan mare. Ibu deh, ada kem cerita tuh. Ah, dua budakin mada kabar gel. 
നാലാമത്തെ ഈ ദേവാലയം പണി കഴിപ്പിച്ചപ്പോൾ ആ കബറുകളുടെ പുറത്ത് രണ്ട് ചെറിയ ത്രോണോസുകൾ കൂടി പണിത് രണ്ട് ചെറിയ മദ്ബഹാകൾ അത്തരത്തിൽ പണിതിട്ടുള്ളതാണ് അതിൽ വടക്ക് ഭാഗത്ത് കാണുന്ന രണ്ടാം മർത്തോമ ഇവിടെ കബറിടമാണ് രണ്ടാം മർത്തോമ ആയിരത്തി അറുന്നൂറ്റി എൺപത്തി അഞ്ചിലാണ് കാലം ചെയ്യുന്നത് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കബറിടം നാലാം തവണ പുതുക്കിപ്പെടുന്നപ്പോൾ വിശുദ്ധ മർത്തോമാസ്ലിയുടെ നാമത്തിൽ ആ ഒരു ത്രോണോസ് സ്ഥാപിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ആ കബറിടത്തിൻ്റെ മുകളിൽ പണിയുകയാണ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ളത് വട തെക്കു ഭാഗത്ത് കാണുന്ന കബറിടം അഞ്ചാം മർത്തോമായുടേതാണ് ആയിരത്തി എഴുന്നൂറ്റി എൺപത്തി അഞ്ചിലാണ് അദ്ദേഹം കാലം ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കബറിടം തിൻ്റെ മുകളിൽ വിശുദ്ധ സ്തെഫാനോ സഹതായുടെ നാമത്തിൽ ഒരു ത്രോണോസ് പണിതുകൊണ്ട് നാലാം തവണ പുതുക്കിപ്പണിതപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഒരു മദ്ബഹ കൂടി പണിതിരിക്കുന്നു അങ്ങനെ അഞ്ച് മദ്ബഹകളാണ് ഈ ദേവാലയത്തിൻ്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ ഇപ്പോൾ ഉള്ളത് വിശേഷപ്പെട്ട ദിവസങ്ങളിൽ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വിശുദ്ധ മർത്തോമാസ്ലിഹായുടെ പ്ര പ്രധാന പെരുന്നാൾ ദിനമായ ഡിസംബർ ഇരുപത്തൊന്നാം തീയതി ഉൾപ്പെടെയുള്ള ചില വിശേഷപ്പെട്ട ദിവസങ്ങളിൽ മാത്രമാണ് അഞ്ച് മദ്ബഹാകളിലും ഒരുപോലെ വിശുദ്ധ കുർബാന അർപ്പിക്കപ്പെടുന്നത് വിശുദ്ധ അഞ്ചുമ്മൽ കുർബാന എന്നാണ് അത് അറിയപ്പെടുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഓൺ ട്വൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് ജൂലൈ നയൻറ്റീൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് സിക്സ് എ ഡി മലയാള മനോരമ അ റിനൗണ്ട് ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പർ പബ്ലിഷ് ദ ന്യൂസ് അബൌട്ട് എ ടു ഇഞ്ച് ആൻഡ് വൺ ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് ഇഞ്ച് വൈഡ് കോപ്പർ ക്രോസ് ആൻഡ് എ സിൽവർ whistle to fill with holy chrism discovered from the basement pit of the first church when excavation was being conducted to build the present church and it is believed that it belonged to saint thomas when he put the foundation stone of the first building it was later placed under the altar of the present church building with due reverence mixture of molasses fish glue slate lime egg albumin etc were used as mortar for plastering the walls and fixing tiles paintings were drawn using natural pigments derived from plants the thorn of the catholic gate of the east was established in malangara church by patriarch his holiness mor ignatius abdul masi the second in ernam church consecrating his gracious paulos mar ivanius as the first catholicos of the east and the malangara metropolitan in the same year the present building was consecrated in 1916 ad on may 29th on a rainy monsoon night The huge cross made of pure gold and decorated with precious stones and diamonds were stolen from Nernam church after breaking seven locks from the chamber inside the 600 year old Nelpura in which the present reliquary is situated. A massive search and investigation by the British led police were initiated. A lot of the church priests and sextants were brutally interrogated. by the police and the victims prostrated before the altar of the church and appealed for the intervention of mother mary in extreme pain tears and fasting the police continued their extreme torture to detect the culprit among all the concerned people of the church their prayers were heard and colopan a native goldsmith of kayankolam was arrested accidentally when a policeman by chance asked him the question on the cross of nernam church and noticed a sudden change of expression on his face coupled with his sudden rise in wealth when interrogated he admitted that he stole the cross along with two other accomplices velaini parmu and changnashari gopalan they admitted to the crime and during the interrogation confessed that on that rainy night when they were conducting the theft around 3 am after they broke open the three locks the parish of saint behnan on a horse stopped them they could not move forward so they defiled the place by urinating and defecating there after which the parish disappeared when they broke seven locks they were again stopped by the parish of mother mary with a child in her hand who was very powerful and they could not move any further they confessed that they removed their dress and got naked and the parish of mother mary disappeared and that's when they were able to break the last lock and steal the golden cross it was then when some unknown forces started ringing the church bell 
This event was published in the Malayala Manorama newspaper on the 8th of July 1916-18, citing the account of the incident from the thieves themselves. The thieves had cut down the cross and sold some part of it. The litigation that ensued was a long and torturous one, because eventually all of the three thieves were set free. Since the church could not ascertain what was the exact weight of the cross or its purity, as nobody had ever weighed it. Even though the courts let Kolopan and associates go free, they had committed a major crime. They angered the Holy Mother Mary herself. It is said that Kolopan developed an unknown ailment all around his body, forcing his family to throw him out of the house and it was cited by many that he was seen lying down near the Kadisha church at Kayangalam, calling on Mother Mary to forgive him. People refusing to touch or look at him and cross were picking off flesh and skin from his body. He died a very agonizing death. Some parts of the old cross were retrieved. The current gold cross of Naranam was made in 1952 AD from the remains of the old cross with some additions and was blessed by then Catholicos of the East and Malangara Metropolitan, His Holiness Basilius Gevergis II. In the year 1952 AD, the 19th century celebrations of the arrival of St. Thomas in India was celebrated in the Naranam Church, commemorating the legacy and importance of the Church in Christianity itself. In 1972 AD, the 1900 years of the martyrdom of St. Thomas was celebrated in Nernam Church. The bones of St. Thomas were dug up from the present-day Mailapur in the 2nd century by King Vasudeva of the Chola Empire and sent with the help of a trader to Edessa, which is present-day Urfa in Turkey near the Syrian border. And from there some parts were later moved to Greek island of Chios. In 2004, the holy relics of St. Thomas, which is believed to be a born from the finger of St. Thomas given by the Metropolitan of Mosul, and the soil from the grave at Mailapur in Chennai were entombed in the reliquary or Smriti Mandiram outside the church at the hands of His Holiness Basilius Martoma Matthews II, the Catholicos of the East and the Malangara Metropolitan. In 2007, the Nernam Church was declared a pilgrimage center by the Catholicos of the East and the Malangara Metropolitan, His Holiness Basilius Martoma Didimos I. The three-year-long centenary celebrations of establishment of the Catholicate of the East was started in Nernam Church in 2009 and a concelebration of 101 priests led by the Catholicos of the East and the Malangara Metropolitan His Holiness Basilius Martoma Paulos II was celebrated in the church. In 2017, a shrine was dedicated at Tomatukadavu, a place where St. Thomas arrived in 52 AD. Nanabal is Savage. They were allowed in Namdana. I wonder the name 
ഇവിടുത്തെ പെരുന്നാളുകൾ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനമായിട്ട് ആഘോഷിക്കുന്നത് ദേവമാതാവിൻ്റെയും മാർത്തോമാശ്ലീകമായിരുന്നു സെപ്റ്റംബർ ഒന്ന് മുതൽ എട്ട് വരെ മാതാവിൻ്റെ നാമത്തിലുള്ള എട്ട് നോയമ്പ് വളരെ ആഘോഷപൂർവ്വം പതിനായിരക്കണക്കിന് ആളുകൾ പങ്കെടുക്കുന്ന റാസ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ പ്രാധാന്യം അറിയിക്കുന്ന ഒരു പെരുന്നാളാണ് മാർത്തോമാശ്ലീക കുന്തമേറ്റ ഓർമ്മ അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കബറടങ്ങിയ ആ ഓർമ്മയെ നിലനിർത്തിക്കൊണ്ട് തോമാശ്ലീകയുടെ ഡിസംബറിലെ പെരുന്നാളിനും വളരെ ആഘോഷപൂർവ്വമായി ഈ പെരുന്നാളെ കൊണ്ടാടുകയാണ് അത് പരുമലയിൽ നിന്ന് ആയിരക്കണക്കിന് ആളുകൾ പങ്കെടുക്കുന്ന റാസ ിൻ്റെ റാസയിലും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ മാത്തോമാശ്ലീകയുടെ പെരുന്നാളോട് നിൽക്കുന്ന റാസയിലും ഇവിടെ ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള പൊൻകുരിശ് എട്ട് നോയമ്പിന് രാവിലത്തെ കുർബാനയ്ക്ക് മധുബയിൽ വയ്ക്കുന്നുണ്ട് തോമാശ്ലീകയുടെ ഡിസംബറിലെ പെരുന്നാളിനും അത് മധുബയിൽ വയ്ക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അത് ഭക്തജനങ്ങൾ കാണുന്നതിനും അതിൽ നിന്ന് അനുഗ്രഹങ്ങൾ പ്രാപിക്കുന്നതിനുമുള്ള അവസരം ആ അവസരത്തിൽ ഉണ്ടാകുന്നതാണ് ഈ പള്ളി എ സംബന്ധിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞാൽ മലങ്കര ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് സഭയുടെ ആസ്ഥാന കേന്ദ്രമായിരുന്നു ഈ പള്ളി അതായത് ഒരു കാലത്ത് ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് സഭയിലെ ഏറ്റവും സമ്പന്നമായ ഒരു ദേവാലയം പന്ത്രണ്ടാം പള്ളിയായിരുന്നു ഏതാണ്ട് ആയിരക്കണക്കിന് ഏക്കർ കൃഷി ഭൂമികൾ സഭയുടെ പല ആവശ്യങ്ങൾക്കും സഭയുടെ പല പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾക്കും നിർണ്ണം പള്ളി അതിൻ്റേതായിട്ടുള്ള സാമ്പത്തികമായും അല്ലാതെയുമുള്ള സഹായങ്ങൾ ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് നൽകിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഇവിടെ കുർബാനയിൽ ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്ന അപ്പം കുർബാന അപ്പം അത് ഒരു വലിയ വിശുദ്ധമായ സംവിധാനവും സംഭവമാണ് ഏതാണ്ട് കുർബാന നമ്മൾ ആരംഭിച്ച കാലം മുതലുള്ള ആ കുർബാനയുടെ ഭാഗം പിറ്റേ പ്രാവശ്യം ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്ന അപ്പത്തിൽ ചേർത്ത് അതിൻ്റെ ഭാഗം അടുത്ത പ്രാവശ്യം അങ്ങനെ ഓരോ പ്രാവശ്യവും അങ്ങനെ അതിൻ്റെ അംശം ചേർത്ത് ചേർത്ത് ചേർത്താണ് ഇന്നും ഇവിടെ കുർബാനയപ്പം ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് അങ്ങനെ കുർബാനയപ്പം ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് ശുശ്രൂഷകർ നല്ല രീതിയിൽ കുളിച്ച് ശുദ്ധമായി വൃത്തിയായി വസ്ത്രം മാറി വന്ന ശേഷമാണ് ഇവിടെ ഈ കുർബാനയപ്പം ഉണ്ടാകുന്നത് The church has been a center of visit for a large number of eminent personalities and spiritual heads. Some of the church leaders who visited to see and relish the mother church. 1905 AD Mar Dehna Bishop of Persia. 1603 AD the Portuguese Archbishop Alexio de Menezes. 1785 AD Leonard Paulinus of St Bartholomew. 1910 AD His Holiness Ignatius Abdul Second the Patriarch of Antioch 1963 AD His Holiness Vasigan I the Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of Armenia 1964 AD His Holiness Moran Mor Ignatius Yakub III Patriarch of Antioch 1967 AD His Holiness Justinian Patriarch of Romania 1977 AD His Holiness Piman the Patriarch of Russia 1982 AD His Holiness Eliza the 2nd Patriarch of Georgia 2080 His Holiness Bartholomew I Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople 
2880 His Holiness Karakin II, the Supreme Patriarch and Catholic Cause of Armenia. 2010 AD His Holiness Aram I, the Armenian Catholic Cause of the House of Sicilia. 2016 AD His Holiness Abun Matthias, the Patriarch of Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The church is a major pilgrimage center of great historical importance and place of miracles not only for the Malankara Orthodox Church of Kerala but also for entire Christianity. Being counted as one of the oldest surviving churches in the world, Nernam, the mother church, stands tall today surviving all the tribulations and trials of time upholding the flag of Christianity in India. Its doors are open to the needy and the persecuted, and its altars offer intercession of the Lord Jesus, Mother Mary, and all saints in the life of the devotees. Miracles are a common experience to those who come seeking for help to the Mother Church. The Nernam Church has an ever-burning chandelier Poliyavalaka right in the middle of the church. ഈ ദേവാലയത്തിൻ്റെ മധ്യഭാഗത്ത് കാണുന്നതായ ഈ വിളക്ക് പുലിയാവിളക്ക് അഥവാ കിടാവിളക്ക് എന്നാണ് അറിയപ്പെടുന്നത് ആയിരത്തിലധികം വർഷം പഴക്കമുള്ള ഒരു ഓട്ടുവിളക്കാണ് ഈ പുലിയാവിളക്ക് ഇതിൻ്റെ മധ്യഭാഗത്ത് ഒരു കുരിശുണ്ട് ആ കുരിശിനോട് ചേർന്ന് തന്നെ ഇരുപത്തിനാല് തിരികൾ കത്തിക്കാനുള്ള സൗകര്യമുണ്ട് അതുകൂടാതെ പന്ത്രണ്ട് കൈ വിളക്കുകളും ഈ വിളക്കിനോട് ചേർന്ന് ഉണ്ട് വെളിപാട് പുസ്തകം നാലാം അധ്യായം നാലാമത്തെ വാക്യത്തിൽ പറയുന്ന ദൈവശാ ശാസ്ത്രപരമായ ഒരു അർത്ഥമാണ് ഈ വിളക്കിന് ചേർക്കപ്പെട്ടിട്ടുള്ളത് അതായത് സ്വർഗത്തിൽ ഒരു ഒരു സിംഹാസനം ഉൺ മധ്യഭാഗത്തുണ്ട് എന്നും ഇരുപത്തിനാല് മൂപ്പന്മാർ ആ സിംഹാസനത്തിന് ചുറ്റും നിന്ന് ആരാധന അടയ്ക്കുന്നതിനെക്കുറിച്ചും അവിടെ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് അതേപോലെ തന്നെയാണ് മധ്യഭാഗത്തുള്ള കുരിശ് ക്രിസ്തുവിൻ്റെ സൂചന നൽകുന്നു ഇരുപത്തിനാല് മൂപ്പന്മാരുടെ സൂചനയാണ് ഇരുപത്തിനാല് തിരികൾ കത്തിക്കാനായിട്ടുള്ള സൗകര്യം കാണിച്ചിട്ടുള്ളതും പന്ത്രണ്ട് കൈവിളക്കുകൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് പന്ത്രണ്ട് അപ്പോസ്തോലന്മാരെ സൂചിപ്പിക്കുന്ന ഒന്നുമാണ് ഇതിൽ കൊളുത്തിയിരിക്കുന്ന ഈ അഗ്നി നൂറ്റാണ്ടുകൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് കൊളുത്തപ്പെട്ട ഒന്നാണ് മുന്നൂറ്റി അറുപത്തഞ്ച് ദിവസവും ഇരുപത്തിനാല് മണിക്കൂറും ഈ തിരി കെടാതെ സൂക്ഷിക്കുന്ന സൗകര്യമാണ് ഇവിടെ ഉള്ളത് with its unique design and grace a source of light and energy to various other churches and august functions irrespective of denominations people come here to light the torches of their churches or occasions from the heart of the mother <laughs>